I don't know about you, but it makes me a little nervous to see those best 20 to 30 parenting books of the year lists. Because which parent has time to read 20 books on parenting? So today, we're gonna to talk about just five books that I think are all you need. And they really have the power to not only change what you might do with your kids, but transform the way you think about it and thereby transforming that relationship. Hi, I'm Dr. Amy. I'm a board certified pediatrician and the founder of Kinder Digital Pediatric Clinic, where I see patients right from their home. Welcome back to my channel where I answer your questions and we have an open discussion about children's health and development in a way that's evidence-based, holistic, and focused on practical advice. So I'm actually a big fiction reader. Almost all my bookshelf is filled with novels. So I don't actually personally love to read nonfiction unless it is very helpful. And my friends know if I'm recommending a nonfiction book to them, then I must have learned a lot from it. Now I'll tell you a little bit about the criteria I used to put this list of five books together. I've bought many, many copies of all these books because I keep lending them out. And to me, that's always a sign that this is helpful because I just seem to keep buying them. So to start off with, they're all big concept, big framework books, meaning they're not just here to tell you how to do something small and specific, but they're designed to make you think about the framework in which we interact with our kids or think about parenting. In other words, you can also take these frameworks and adapt them to your specific values and needs of your family. So for me, it's important to give you books that can really benefit every parent out there. Secondly, they must be evidence-based and well-researched. No matter how big of an expert an author is, I always want to see the evidence that what they're talking about has been tested and what the results are that we've seen. Thirdly, they must have actionable advice. We can read all day about philosophical debates and everything, but I, just like you, want to know exactly how do we do this? What are the steps? If I've never heard of this concept before, how do I even begin to think this way? And that's an element in all of these books. And lastly, they have to be well-written. It's so painful for me to read something that is just poorly written or too dry. So for me, having an enjoyable reading experience is also important. All right, without further ado, let's dive into the first book. This first book here, I just love the title too. It's called The Gardener and the Carpenter. It's written by Alison Goldnick, who is a professor of both psychology and philosophy at Berkeley. She's a mother and grandmother, and she takes both a personal and scientific view to the concept of parenting. This is a big questions book. Right in the first two pages, she asks, where did this concept of parenting come from? And why is it that nowadays we think of raising kids as something where you put in an input and you expect some sort of result like we do with work? And she compares that to being a carpenter versus being a gardener who is there to nourish and protect and facilitate nature, but then stands back and allows the garden to take shape. I think this is a beautiful metaphor for some of the forces and tension that we experience today in modern parenting and raising kids. So we're so goal-oriented and result-oriented in so many parts of our life, but when it comes to kids, it's often not a formula or we learn about ways we're supposed to do something, but then we don't see the result. And that can be frustrating and disappointing and leaving parents with this feeling of, am I doing something wrong if my child is this way or that way? So this book is a wonderful exploration of these two opposing ideas. It is based in developmental psychology, evolutionary biology, really well-written in that beautiful interplay between science, experience, psychology, philosophy. And I think this is suitable for parents of any stage, including before you have kids. Because unknowingly, a lot of the ways we think about having kids are already so influenced by the way we approach our careers and everything else. So I think it's a great starting point for starting to think, hmm, what is actually best for the child? Or how does being a gardener really bring out the fullest potential in our children? Now, the second book is one of my all-time favorites that I've read multiple times. It's called Bring Up Baby, and it's written by an American journalist who's living in Paris with her husband, who's from, I think, England. And she's experiencing being a mother in France. So the premise of this book is where she explores how she thinks that French parenting might be superior in a lot of ways, seen in the way that their babies seem to sleep through the night sooner, they eat everything, and they're just more well-behaved, if you would. But she approaches it from this fun and hilarious, but very well-researched 
almost anthropological way, which is diving deep into both cultures, the history of parents, children, the societal environments where they grow up, and she's comparing them. Now, you don't have to agree with her and think French parenting is superior or that French children are better behaved. Not at all. Maybe part of the reason I like this is because I have an undergraduate degree in anthropology, so I always love comparing cultures. But I think the other big message here is that parenting and your relationship with your kids, it is so cultural. It is not independent from the time and place that you live in. And I think it's liberating to actually think about how other people on other parts of the planet are doing it completely differently. It helps us jump out of our one perspective where we feel like this is the only way to think about something. I think it's very helpful to help us see parts of our lives that might have been subconscious, meaning we didn't know we were doing this, we didn't know we were thinking about it this way. And all it takes is that comparison to really highlight everything. This book again has a wide scope. She talks from everything from pregnancy all the way to dealing with teenagers and schools. So again, I think it's applicable at any time of the parenthood journey. And maybe you are curious about how French parents do it, or maybe you just want to see how that compares to wherever you are and the implicit things, the understood things that have been built into your culture that now affects your relationship with your kids. So whether you end up being more like her or less like her, I think the point is just to appreciate the difference and to show you that you have the power to decide and to pull different elements from different cultures that work for your child and yourself so that you begin to design your own culture at home. All right, guys, that's it for part one this week. Stay tuned next week for part two, where we talk about the other three books in this series, which includes dealing with older and teenage kids, ADHD, mental health, etc., etc. See you next week.